Welcome friends to part 26 of this series where we'll be creating an Instagram clone in Flutterflow and Superbase. In the previous video, we created the UI pages for our chat messages. So in this video, we'll be adding the message functionality to our app. All right, so first things first, we need some Superbase tables. Specifically, we need our chats table over here as well as our messages table, which has a foreign key relationship to our chats table. So let's go into our Superbase dashboard. And inside our table editor over here, we'll create a new table. We'll name this chats. We'll disable row level security. So we'll disable that and we'll add some more columns. So really the only column that we actually need is this users column over here. So we'll name this as users. But what is special about this column is that you can see that the type that I put down here was a list of UUIDs. So what a list is, is basically multiple UUIDs put inside a single column in Superbase. So with our users column over here, for the type, we want to choose UUID and we want to get rid of this default value. But now inside this gear icon, we can see that we have some options over here. So we want to actually choose this option defined as array. So what an array is, is basically it is able to take in multiple UUIDs at once and sort of put them inside one single column as a list. So once we have that, we can click on that and then we can actually, that's all we need for our chats table. So we can go ahead and save that. And now while we're here, we also can create our messages table. We can disable role level security once more. So now we can put in our chat ID foreign correlation. So this will be of type int 8 and we also need the text. So message text, which will be of type text. We can go over here and add our foreign correlation. So at this stage of the tutorial, you should also be familiar enough to know how to create a foreign correlation. So the table that we want to reference is our chats table for our messages table, the column that we want to start the reference from is our chat ID. And the column in our chess table that we want to reference is our ID column. So we can also set this as cascade. So we save this. Now we can save our table over here. Oh, and one more column that we should add inside our messages table actually is one column to see who the chat message was from. So sender ID. So I'll add this UUID, we get rid of this. And for our sender ID, we can also do a foreign correlation to our user data table. So this will be sender ID to our user ID. And we can also set these to cascade. All right, great. All right, so now that we have our tables created, let's actually go into our Flutterflow dashboard and we can create some chat groups. So, so going to our widget tree, we want to go into our other user page. And whenever our user presses on message, we want to insert a new row into our chat table over here. So with this message button selected, we want to open the action flow editor on the on tap action. We want to insert a new row. So insert a super base row. And for this, it will be under. Yep. And it looks like once again, I forgot to get schema inside here. So remember, we always have to get schema whenever we create or edit our tables in super base. Right. So we can go back and now we should be able to see our chats table. So we want to set some fields. We don't need to set the ID nor the creator that. What we need to set is this list of UUIDs over here. However, for this value over here, we have to do something more to sort of create that list of UUIDs in order to insert it here. So what we can do is that we can go over to code expression over here. So in here, we can define a code expression in order to create that list of UUIDs that we can then put inside Superbase. So here you see that we can add some arguments. So the first argument can be current user ID. This will be of type string and we can set this value as our authenticated users user ID. And for the second argument, it will simply be 
the other user ID. So this is will be the user ID of the person. So this will be the user ID of the other person. So it will be our type string as well. And this value will then be the user ID passed through our page parameter. And now we go over to this expression over here. So to create an array, it will just be square brackets. And inside here, we can then pass our current user ID as well as our other user ID variable. And it looks like I spelled this wrongly, so I'll change that. Then now that we have this array over here, we'll check errors. And yep, everything is good. We can click on confirm. And now this will insert a new row into our Superbase chat table. But with the current implementation, there is the problem of having duplicate rows being inserted with the same users in this list over here. So let's first add a new conditional action. And we'll close out of this for now. But before we are able to check if this row exists, we first need to do a super base query to get that row. So I'll do a super base query rows. For the table, it'll be our chat table. And for the filter, we want to filter where our users list contains both our user ID and then we also want to filter where our users, once again, list contains our authenticated user, user ID. So these two filters make sure that the correct row is selected. And then we can also give it an action output variable of chat row perhaps. And now in our conditional action over here for our condition, we can simply check our action output chat row is set and not empty. So if it is set and not empty, that means there already exists an existing row. So we no longer want to insert our row. So we cut this action. But instead, if it is empty, that means the relationship currently does not exist in our chat table. So then we do want to insert a new row. So we'll just paste this action here. So let's go ahead and check out our chat page first. So our chat page currently has no data. And so we need to sort of get the data and can do that through our page parameters. So remember our page parameters, we click on our root page, and we can add some page parameters over here. So the page parameter can just be named chat row. For the type, it will be of type, so base row, and the table will be our chats table. So now we can go back to our other user page on the message button. And now we can actually navigate to our chats page. So if there was already a relationship with both of our users, then we want to navigate to our chat page. And here we need to pass some values. For the chat row data, it will simply be our action output, this chat row over here. But here we need to specify some available options since for the super base query action, Fulfill always treats the results as a list, even if there's only one item inside. So for this, we need to do item and index, and then we can just do the first index, even though there's only one item inside. All right, so this navigates to the chat page now. And in this other branch, we also want to navigate to our chat page. But the row that we want to pass is actually the action output of this row. So we can give this another action output variable name. So possibly new chat row. And then we want to pass that action output when we navigate to now. So this will be action outputs, new chat row. All right, so in our chats page over here, we can now try to update the data inside the UI over here. But remember, in our chats row, we only have the UUIDs of the current members of the chat. We do not have their other user data like their username or their profile picture. So we need to get that data from our user data table. So in our column over here, we want to create a new super base query. For the table, it will be our user data table. But here we want to specify a single row since we only need the user data of the person we are messaging. And now for the filter, we want to filter where the user ID is equal to 
the user ID of the other person. So how we can do that is we can go into this value and we select our chat row users. But since this users is a list with two user IDs, we need to sort of specify to get the user ID of the other person and not the currently authenticated user. So over here, we want to filter list item and we can add a condition. I'm going to add a single condition where, where the item in list, that is the item inside the users column list, is not equal to our currently authenticated user's user ID. And if we try to click confirm, you can see that the current variable is not valid. That is because this is still returning a list, even though there's only one element inside. So when this happens, we need to do item at index and first. So now it should save properly. Yep. So now our super base query actually gets the user data of our other user inside our chat group. And now we can link the data here to reflect it inside of our UI. So first we do the profile picture image. So this will be our user data row profile pic. For the username, we'll change this to our user data row username. And likewise for this display name over here. All right, great. So now we have successfully created a way for users to create new group chats and sort of link up with other users in our app. And all that's left to do now is to actually add the message functionality and display all the messages inside this chat group over here. And once we are done with this message functionality, we're actually completely done with the basic version of our Instagram clone app. So I hope you're excited to finally finish and have a working version of an Instagram clone and I'll see you in the next video.